All right. So um, I'm running three different screens here, just so you know. So um, this one's looking at me, looking at, at you, and then this one over here has, now I'm over on this one, has the um, schedule of the day on it, and then I can kind of watch the chat room too to see if there's any questions and, and things of that nature. So, so if you see me jumping back and forth, oh, look at that. I go from one screen to another screen, and then I'm back on one screen. Oh, we're going to have fun with this. We're going to have fun with this, Deets. I can tell you that right now. Okay, so um, first off, welcome to Algebra 3. It's good to see your smiling faces, even if it is virtually. I wish we were live and in person, but safety comes first, so let's keep it that way. Um, I'll tell you this, that... Algebra 3 is an extension of Algebra 2. You're going to find that we're going to go over a lot of topics a little bit more in depth from Algebra 2. Um, so if you were successful in Algebra 2, you probably will be successful in Algebra 3. If you were had some struggles or had some had to come in for some extra help in Algebra 2, Probably going to have to, you know, come in for some extra help in Algebra 3. Um, I will tell you that on the It's Learning page, um, because I have it um, up right here, um, this page has right up, each week will be a brand new page like this. And so when you check in on It's Learning every day, go to that week's page. And I actually, what I'll probably do up here is instead of just week one content page, I'll start putting the actual calendar dates that go along with that. But over on this far, on the right side, you will always have my office hours and my office code there for you at all times. That one's always going to be in that spot. I added this morning the online textbook. It is not that great of an of a site. When you click there, it takes you to um, somebody basically just scanned in uh, your the textbook as PDFs. And now that I'm running a Google chat, so it's all like this. It's broken down not by chapters but by units, and so it's kind of hard to navigate through. It's not the best. It's not the highest quality website that there is, but it is your textbook online if you want to. Um, I'm going to try and gear us towards not um, relying on the textbook. I'm going to have worksheets and that stuff all the way through through the course. So, And then below that is like, so then homework for this week and how to submit it. And then I also put the answer key on there because some of some of the pictures you were sending me, I could read very well. Some of the pictures that you were sending me, um, I, I couldn't see very well. Okay, So I put those on there for that. Okay? Um, during class, um, if you have um, a question, um, I'm... I'm hoping to be able to see the chat on on my other screen that I've got going on. So um, you can type a question in there. If you um, will also be taking attendance through the chat. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a question of the day um, every live class. And I'm going to have you put that answer then in the in the chat. So today's question of the day I went pretty easy and you can type this in at any point in time during the lesson today's question of the day is what is your favorite color okay so that's today's question of the day type it in the chat um, and then I'll see it popping up and then I'll, after class then I'll go through and I'll check you off and um, show that stuff okay the other thing that I have is um, 
you should be checking its learning every single day. Okay, so you should be going into here and looking, especially on the overview, every single day with that. Okay, so that you can see what's due. Okay, so there's some things that are due today. There's some things that are due on Sunday. Okay, Sunday night. Um, it shows you that gives you a link to the content page and the worksheet. If you have a printer, great. Um, you don't have to print it out though. You can just do all of your work on a separate sheet of paper, and I'm totally fine with that. Okay. So with that being said, let's dive into today's lesson. Today's lesson is going to be all about solving linear equations. It's the second half of the worksheet that uh, is due for this week, and it's um, three questions on this week's formative. Uh, side note, there'll be a formative every every week-ish or a quiz. There'll be some kind of assessment, I should say, would probably be the best way of me saying it. There'll be some kind of assessment every week. This week, it's a formative. It's an eight-question formative um, with some solving, some simplifying, and some evaluating. Um, and you can, there's two multiple choices and six um, short answer type ones. And I, I have to apologize. I, it's been since May that I made a, a It's Learning quiz, um, and I gave the wrong kind. So I have to go in and I have to check all of your answers. I was trying to get it as fill in the blank, but I clicked the wrong box. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get back in the groove here momentarily. So if uh, I'm going to try all weekend long to uh, correct them right away so that you can retake that those up to three, you get three attempts at uh, taking that one or this particular one. Okay. All right. So here we go. Solving linear equations. Um, just a couple of quick reminders about solving equations in the uh, algebraic world. Um, first off, the golden rule of algebra, what you do to one side of an equal sign, you have to do to the other side so that we're staying in balance. We want our algebraic lives to be balanced at all times. So if I add 7 to one side, then I got to add 7 to the other side to get it back to being balanced. Okay? To move something to the opposite side, you use inverse operations. Or to get rid of something from one side of the equation, we have to use inverse operations. So if it's being multiplied, we divide. If it's being subtracted, we add. And then we always revert back to rule number one that we got to do it on both sides. Okay? When we're solving, the answer is always in the form of variable equals number or number equals variable. And that variable is a single solitary letter. Some people I've noticed on when the homework for this week that they've given me something along the lines of, um, I think it was 3 elevenths B equals zero. That is not variable equals number because you actually have two numbers in here. You still have this number right there to get rid of. So that's a no-go right there. Okay, so that's no, that's not variable equals number, okay? B equals zero, which is the actual answer to that particular one, okay? That is variable equals number, okay? And lastly, I know that you've heard it a thousand times, but you can always check your answers, okay? That's the cool part about algebra, is that you can... Once you get to the end, when you're solving an equation, you can take that answer and put it back in at the top and check your work, and you'll know within 45 seconds of being done that you got 100% on that question. Okay? 
when you're simplifying and when you're evaluating, you can't do that. But the great part about solving is that you can do that. So let's get into it. Um, very quick. Um, I don't plan on going very long today with class. So I've got um, like four more slides to do with a couple of examples on each one. So I just want to go through and I want to um, try some different, you know, things, show you some different things, and then I'll turn you loose. Okay. So. First off here, I would subtract 9 from both sides. When you subtract 9 from both sides, now again, I am a show work kind of a, uh, of a teacher. So I expect you as my students to be show work kind of students. Okay. Now, I'm a vertical shower of work. Okay, I like to work top to bottom. If you're a side to side, that's great. Um, also, in terms of these notes, if you uh, think, well, Linz, I'm just going to watch you do these because we did these way back in Algebra 1. Hey, that's your um, pro prerogative to do. I'm not going to force you to do notes. I'm not going to ever check your notes. I'm not going to do anything like that. I, You are young adults, and you guys can make up that, your own minds on that. So. Okay. Side note, if you also have questions too, and I don't see them in the chat, um, just unmute yourself and um, say, hey, Linz, what about, you know, did you, because sometimes I'll be the first one to admit it, and I'm sure that Aiden Galligan is nodding her head yes on this one, that I have been known to be wrong from time to time. See, there, I, see, I had to go over and I had to look at the other one and saw Aiden going, yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so... So that leaves us here with negative 4x is the only thing on that side. Negative 23 minus uh, 9 is going to be negative 32. Then I can divide everything by negative 4 on both sides. And that leaves me then with x here is equal to positive 8. Now, when I say you can go back and you can check your work, you don't have to show it. You can just go back and do it, okay? So 4 times 8 is 32. 9 minus 32 is negative 23. Yahoo for school, it checks out. We are winners. Okay? Quick, easy. The nice thing about this being your third time through the algebraic world is that on problems like this next one, you can do multiple things at the start. So for instance, I can add x there to clear that x, gets the x's on one side, but I can also add 3 at the same time. I have trust in your mathematical abilities that you can do that. If you don't like doing that, that's totally fine. Okay, You would just have two separate steps then. And I'm okay with that too. We're all going to end up in the same place. You'll hear me say this a lot this year. There is more than one way to get from where I'm standing, Wausau West High School, to Mosinee. Okay? We can take multiple different routes to get there, but we're all going to end up in Mosinee. Okay? All right, so then this becomes, I've got 8x on this side, and I've got 18 on that side. Okay? Then what we're going to do is now we're going to divide by 8. And here is where I'm going to, if I come over to this screen on my little Chromebook over here, if I come over to that one, I'm going to see a lot of scared faces. Because 
most of you would probably put something along the lines here of 18 eighths or uh, 2.25, okay? Because you would go to this handy dandy calculator type thing and you would do 18 divided by eight and it would get you 2.25. But here's where the kicker is. In algebra, because we're a college level, higher level class, we're gonna leave it in fraction form. And that's going to be nine halves. Fractions are our friends, okay? We like fractions. Tell yourself all the time. I know I'm, if I came over here and I looked at the chat, some people are going, uh-uh, no way. Yes, fractions are our friends. They will make your lives easier, okay? Promise, I promise my promise to you, and I won't lie to you, contrary to what Aiden Galligan's gonna tell me, I'm not gonna lie, okay? Fractions are your friend. Leave it as nine halves. Um, there was one on the homework where it was like 11 halves, and some people wrote 5.5. I'm okay with that, but when it gets to be a non-ending decimal, that's where fractions become more and more your friend. Okay. Love it. Okay. Fractions are our friends so much that we can even do them in problems. And problems with fractions get done the exact same way. So first off, I would subtract 9. That leaves me then with negative 4 fifths x equaling, oh, what's that going to be? Negative 41. Way back when you were learning about fractions, you probably learned all about reciprocals. Okay? So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal okay. and what that does is that cancels everything out on the left side leaving me just with x. Negative times a negative is positive. 5 divided by 5 is 1, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, times x is x. Love it. And then on the other side, I'm going to think here that, oh, well, that's 41 over 1. If I multiply straight across, and actually what I should do is I should bring this down a little bit. And it looks like it's more across. Okay. If I multiply straight across, 41 times 5, or negative 41 times negative 5, is 205, 1 times 4 is 4, and that is a wonderful answer. Another note on the fractions, I love improper fractions more than I love mixed up numbers. Okay? It's cleaner, it's prettier, it's like this pretty face, okay? It's just nice, nice. Okay. Oops, now i got to move this stuff over because I went too far to the left, or to the right, I should say. Oops, that breaks. Got to have room for my next one. Okay. And I know, too, that i got to slow down a little bit in between because I like, I want to go fast, and, and, and you know, I'm like, I'm like Ricky Bobby. I want to go fast. Okay. So, on this next one on letter D, the only difference here now is we've got two fractions that need to be added first. So, first we've got to find a common denominator. In this case, it's going to be 15. Okay. Two thirds in terms of 15 I went 3 times 5 to get 15. So I'm going to have to go 2 times 3 to get the 
numerator there, so then that's going to be x minus 5 times 3 gets me 15, so 3 times 3 gets me 9 for the top there. Now those are those red fractions are equivalent to those blue fractions, and then we would still be equal to 4. 10 fifteenths minus 9 fifteenths is going to be 1 fifteenth, and that's going to equal 4. And then here I could, we'll go in purple just to get a little different color action going on in here, multiply both sides by 15 to clear that out, and that leaves me with x equals 60. And 40 minus 36 is 4. Let me check it. Huh? Love it. Check the chat. I don't see any questions. I do see a uh, Lucas Linsmeyer popped in though on me, but huh? good there. All right, 0. 0.6 G's plus 0. 0.5 equals 2.9. Okay, yeah. so decimals can be done the same way subtract 0. 0.5, subtract 0. 0.5 leaves me with. 0.6g equals 2.4. Divide both sides by 0.6. And that gives me g is equal to 4. Love it. Everybody still good? Thumbs up from everybody. Thanks, Allie. All right, let's go. Two special situations, and these special situations will come into play uh, throughout the course of um, the entire year. Okay? And those special situations are the uh, infinite solutions no solutions cases. Okay. So, oops, now I gotta check. Google Meet Grid View. That one I don't need. Kelter. Yeah, I'm wearing my comment through Google Meet didn't go through. Okay, that one's okay. I'm trying to sign in with Google Meet. Can't find the code to sign in. Apply. Last. Again, riveting uh, internets here. Okay. Alright, so here we would first um, distribute the 5 into there, and so then that would give me 5x minus 20 equals 5x plus 12. Then when I go to move the 5x to the left side, I would subtract 5x. I would have to move the, two, oops, I would always put that in a different color there, so it signifies a different move. And then here is now where we get issues, because I get 0 on the left side, and I get 32 on the right side. And 0 is not equal to 32, that is a false statement. So because it's a false statement, that is a no solution. Now, no solution is not the catch-all for everything. 
okay? If things aren't working out or if you go back and you check it and it doesn't work out, no solution is not the answer always right away. What I would strongly recommend you doing is I would strongly recommend you going back and double checking your work. So again, five times X is five X. Five times four is 20, the negative sign came along, we're good there. Still copied it down, right? Okay, yep, I went back, I checked all of my work, it all looks good to me, now no solutions is the case. Okay. On the other one, distribute the five, and then at the same time, combine some like terms on the uh, right side. Okay. So then that would give me uh, 10 minus 5x equals 10 minus 5x. And now if you saw that both sides are equal, you could stop right there. If you didn't and you added 5x and you subtracted 10, you would get 0 equaling 0. And that's a true statement, just like this, the blue step right above it is also a true statement. So then that would be an infinite solutions case. Okay. And if you wanted to go INF, SOL, that's fine too. Infinite soul, no soul, whichever one you want. Okay? Love it. Now, one last thing. Um, I'm just going to broach the subject. I didn't give you any this week, so um, I'm just going to do one of these two today. Okay? And so John is renting a sailboat. Word problems, okay? First thing you should do on a word problem is you should read it. Okay? John is renting a sailboat on vacation. The boat has a rental fee of $45 plus $7 per hour. If John is charged $101, how many hours did he rent the sailboat for? Okay, so we've read the problem. Second thing that you are going to want to do in this one is you are going to want to define a variable and make an equation with that variable. Okay? So I am all about because he's um, it's ours. Okay, so I would say something along the lines of H equals hours rented. But you could pick any of the 26 letters there for you. Okay, I'm just going with H because we're talking hours is what we are going to be looking for. Then we need to come up with an equation. And our equation is going to be the boat rental has a fee of $45. So we're going to start with $45 plus, plus a $7 per hour fee. So for each hour, that's going to be 7H. So that is the cost to rent or the function to rent at this boat rental shop. Okay. He gets charged $101, so that is going to equal 101. Okay. Once we have our variable defined, once we have our equation defined, now we can solve our equation. Okay. So if I go about solving this, I would subtract 45. That gives me 7H here is equal to 
56. One, two, three, yep, 56. Divide both by 7. Gives me h is equal to 8. Okay. Now, this is crucial when you're dealing with a word problem. Your check not only is does the value that you got make your equation work, but the check is also does the answer you got make sense. Okay. So like for instance here, if we would have gotten a negative answer, that does not make sense because I can't rent a boat for negative hours. Okay? Or if we were this was a people type problem. Okay? If it was the number of people in a store, let's say, and I got 17.34 or a fraction, 17 halves. That doesn't make sense because we need to have a whole person. Okay, so it's got to be a whole number. Here it could have been a decimal because we could have rented it for half of an hour or something like that. And then at the very end, we would just say eight hours for a rental fee. Okay. With that being said, oh, there's me on a glacier. Actually, there's my kids on a glacier. With that being said, um, I am, am open in, for questions. If you uh, would like to ask some questions, hang out a little bit um, and ask some. If not, um, you have, so things that you have to do the rest of this week. So you've got, um, some of you still haven't turned in the first day homework. The first day homework was the, um, just take a quick picture of yourself, um, and submit it. Uh, watch the video. It shows you how to do that. There's the worksheet for this week that's due on Sunday. And there is the the um, formative assessment that you can take. You have three attempts to take um, on that one going forward. So that's all I got for you. Um, if you have anything else or if you have any questions, stick around. I'll be here for the rest of the time. But I'm trying to gear this towards like a half an hour-ish every time. So that's all I got for you.